welcome everyone. Welcome to worship at Emmanuel United Church of Christ this morning. It is indeed a beautiful morning on November uh, 8th. <laughs> uh, strangely beautiful for this time of year. Um, and it is a day when uh, lots of emotions are running through our nation. And we are so glad that you have chosen to bring your whole self here. No matter if you felt like this election was the dawn of a new day or the fizzling of a light or somewhere in between, you are welcome here. You and your whole self are welcome into God's embrace and at Emmanuel United Church of Christ, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I wanna give a couple of announcements. One is that uh, we are continuing our extended pledge drive. Um, you may still yet be getting a pledge card that looks like this in your, uh, in your mailbox. And we encourage you to either return it or call in your pledge numbers to the church office or send them to our form online, which there's a link in your, um, in your worship bulletin for today. This is really critical uh, for our planning purposes for next year, but it's also critical to spiritually claim your place. Uh, and we do that by giving of ourselves, by lighting our own lamps to bring to the party. And so uh, we delight in the lamp that you bring and we encourage you to pledge what light you think you will be able to bring for the coming year because uh, it really helps us a lot. Couple of other announcements. We hope we'll still be able to have Bible study this week. Uh, my children are out of quarantine, so that should make it possible for us to do a Zoom Bible study. Uh, so I will uh, share those links in our Wednesday email. And happy hour is on Tuesday. And so I hope you'll join us uh, at 4 p.m. on Tuesday on Zoom as well. We hope to be able to do in-person things again soon, but we need the case numbers in our county to go down. And an official announcement that we will have our annual meeting by Zoom on November 22nd, right after church. So we encourage you to join by Zoom if you can at all possible. Um, you can do that by joining on our phone line too. If the Zoom technology doesn't work for you, you can call into it like a conference call. If the case numbers in Jefferson County are low enough, we may be able to have a few people in the sanctuary as well, but we don't want to promise that. So please plan on either being on Zoom or uh, being present by phone because your voice matters. And we really want as many people to be uh, virtually present as possible for this annual meeting. We also wanna make note that there is a stewardship challenge, or not stewardship, a reopening fund uh, matching challenge. So a group of anonymous leaders in our church has offered a matching of $2,600. So if you are able to contribute to the reopening fund that uh, you get to by going to our website and clicking on donate and choosing reopening fund or by following the link in your bulletin. Uh, if you are able to do that, uh, that money up to $2,600 will be matched. We're working toward about a $15,000 budget to get us up to speed on things like air scrubbers and uh, cameras and things that will enable us to be able to have a hybrid service for a long time until this pandemic uh, is done. And then possibly if it's working well and people are enjoying it for good. Uh, we imagine that there will be people that will not want to have to miss church when they are not able to be physically present in the building and your gifts are enabling that to happen. So thank you for all that you are doing. And on behalf of the task force, especially, thank you. I believe that is all of the announcements. Um, if I am missing something, which is entirely possible, uh, I encourage you to put that in the chat maybe, um, and uh, we'll, we'll bring it up when we can. For now, let us open in prayer. In all our weakness and all our strength, God, with all our youth-filled spirits and aging bodies, 
we come as your people, strong in faith and eager with questions, singing our praise and whispering our prayers. We come as your people, filled with saintly determination and mindful of our human limitations. We come as your people, made strong in your endless love for us. We know ourselves to be yours and we come as your people, O oh God. Help us light our lamps with your love so that we may be your people today. Amen. Let's join together in our statement of faith. Our creeds and statements of faith are not tests of faith, but rather they are gifts of the tradition of our ancestors who have given us these words to hang our hopes upon in hard times. Let us give thanks for all who came before us as we say it together. We believe in God, the eternal spirit, who is made known to us in Jesus our brother and to whose deeds we testify. Calls the worlds into being, creates humankind in the divine image and sets before us the ways of life and death. God seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. God judges all humanity and all nations by that will of righteousness declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, God has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the whole creation to its creator. God bestows upon us the Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. God calls us into the Church to accept the cause and joy of discipleship. To be servants in the service of the whole human family. To proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil. To share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table to join him in his passion and victory. God promises to all who trust in the gospel, forgiveness of sins, and fullness of grace, courage and struggle for justice and peace, the presence of the Holy Spirit in trial and rejoicing, and, and eternal, eternal life in that kingdom, kingdom which, which has, has no end. end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto God. Amen, indeed. Those words spoken together out of the voices and faces of those people that I miss so dearly, and I know you do too, always lighten my heart. And it's that sense of gratitude that brings me back to church, and I hope it's what brings you there as well. And so even though we are not physically in the church building, we still offer our gifts of gratitude, our gifts of thanks for the ways in which the church continues to be the church even outside of the building. So today I wanna to invite you to imagine the gifts that you are able to give placed upon this altar. Imagine that they are being placed into a stream of God's love and God's welcome to all and that they flow out and nourish plants that we cannot even see, maybe bear fruit that we cannot even see. But the gifts offered from us in our gratitude nourish the world around us with God's love. And so in this moment, we pause to offer those gifts as we sing our doxology together. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Praise all all creatures near below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. 
Hey kids, everybody come up to the screen or the device for children's time. So today at the end of our worship, we're going to hear a cool song that you may not know the words to, but they're going to be on the screen so you can see them. But it's a song that I learned when I went to camp first. And when I had a really cool counselor who loved this song and sang it to us all the time and played the guitar with it and had like a million verses to it. And there was normal ones which is where it came from, which was give me oil for my lamp or give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning, burning, burning. Keep me burning until the break of day. And it's a real fun song and real upbeat. And there's a, like I said, she has all these fun verses to it that I don't know if they're her verses or if they're make their actual verses that somebody else made up. But one of my favorite ones was give me gas for my Ford. Keep me trucking for the Lord and give me wax for my board. Keep me surfing for the Lord. Not will surf, but I thought that was the funniest thing as like a fourth grader. I thought it was a great song and it never ended because we just kept making up new verses to it. And it was great. And I never realized what song or what uh, verse that it came through from the Bible. And I think that part of it was about the verse that we're going to hear today that Eric is going to read for us. And it's about 10 bridesmaids who had oil lamps and some of them had enough oil and some didn't have enough oil. Well, oil lamps were these little things you could hold in your hand, and that was the only way that you could, like, take light from place to place, because they didn't, they didn't have overhead lighting like we have now, and they didn't have the things that we can, we just take with us, like flashlights and, play, like, lanterns that just take a battery, so you always had to make sure that you had enough oil for your lamp to last you the whole night or the whole time that you were going to be gone away from your house, and that made me think of something else, that... There's a lot of things that we can be prepared about, but there's some things that when it happens, it just catches us off guard and we don't, we don't remember what we should have had or we forgot to pack those things or it, all kinds of stuff. Well, and one of them is a verse that Miss Pat put in here that she found and it was, give me faith for my heart, keep me praying. And I thought, you know, I, God did that for me. God gave me something that no matter if I forget all the words, if I can't even remember the Lord's Prayer, that I have something with me all the time that helps me remember how and who to pray for. That's right here. My little hand. You can use your toes if you want to. Whatever. This is it. But And we've done this before. It's called the Five Finger Prayer. But no matter where I am, if I forgot something, if I can't remember the words to any other prayer, if I look at my hand, I know what I'm supposed to pray for. So with the first one, it's who's the closest to you. So your friends and your family and your church family. And even though we're not close together in person, we're still close as a family. And then this one is our instructional finger. So it's the people who tell us and teach us things to do. So like our teachers who need an extra dose of prayers right now, because it's hard. It's really hard to be a teacher right now. They have to do a lot of work and it's way different than they've ever learned and ever done before. And then this one is also very important right now. This is our leaders. And this is our newly elected leaders, um, leaders around the world, all of our leaders in the world that need help, that need God's help, that to put them in the right direction and to make sure we take care of all people. And then this one, Miss Pat will tell you, is the weakest finger because of the tendon we have here. It needs help for stuff. And it takes, you have to work at making sure it stays strong. And this one is for anyone who is sick or maybe lonely or maybe just, just tired and needs God's help, needs, needs to know that God is with them, that other people care about them and that they're loved. So we pray for them. And then last but not least is yourself. Is your little pinky, and that's you. And it's always a great way that no matter what I remember or don't remember, or maybe I'm just in a situation where I just can't figure out what I'm supposed to pray for, this tells me. And God knows the rest. That's the best part. That even if I forget somebody in my five finger prayer or in any other prayer, God knows what I meant and it's going to be okay. So let's use our hands to also pray with our five finger prayer today. So join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you so much for our family and our friends and our church family. Keep them healthy, keep them safe, and let them know that we love them. And then for our teachers, all those who instruct us, our parents and our grandparents who are trying to help us with online school, and 
all of our leaders around the whole world, they all need your guidance, God. They need to know how to make laws that are just and fair for all of your people and to make sure that everyone is taken care of. Then for anybody who is sick, anybody who feels alone, anybody who's just, just so tired and needs a help up and needs to know that you love them and you're always there for them. And last God, we pray for ourselves. Please help us have the strength when we need it. Help us have patience when we need it and help us more importantly, have hope for tomorrow that every day ahead of us is gonna be better than the ones behind us. And that we one day will be all together with our big church family that we love so much. In your son's name we pray, amen. Indeed. Thank you so much. That's such a handy reminder. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when there's no one in the sanctuary with me. I get to think I'm funny. Um, so uh, we are going to now to have a special treat. Luke Anderson has provided some special music for us, and it's an old favorite, the old rugged cross. beautiful Luke thank you so much and it it does our hearts good to see images of the piano in the sanctuary too thank you we move now to the reading of our scripture and today's comes from the lectionary that is given today which is always uh, an interesting adventure Today's scripture is from Matthew 25 that is Jesus's final discourse uh, where he's sort of giving his last pep talks before he goes on to trial. And these are some severe sort of pep, pep talks. There's a lot of 
black and white imagery. There's a lot of um, uh, who's good and who's bad, who's in and who's out kind of thinking that isn't really similar to the rest of what he says. Uh, but there's still good meat and um, good instruction for us. And it's important to remember that Matthew was writing to, uh, so Matthew was crafting his gospel for a group that felt like they were still waiting for Jesus to return and it had been a long time. Uh, so with that, I invite Eric Hoffman to read our scripture for us. Our scripture reading today is from the New Testament, the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. The word of the Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took the flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, Perhaps there will not be enough for us and for you. Go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of the Lord. May God add illumination to this word. Would you pray with me? God, light the way for us. Let your word be a lamp unto our feet. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this is a strange parable, even in the most normal of times. I will admit it makes me highly uncomfortable. Perhaps it's the most uncomfortable for me because I am definitely the foolish bridesmaid, bridesmaid in this story. I am a little bit notorious for always forgetting things and uh, not maybe being as fully prepared as I should be. Um, when Amy Brooks Hoffman was president of the congregation, she uh, had to make me a checklist that is pasted still next to my office door to remind me all the things I need for worship because uh, I would continually forget something and either have to send some uh, wonderful person to run and get something out of my office or, uh, you know, I, I forgot something else and had to run out in the middle of a hymn thinking maybe no one would see me, but they always did. Um, so I really sympathize with these foolish bridesmaids here. I, I, um, I do not take a lot of hope in the idea that their foolishness or carelessness perhaps got them locked out of the kingdom of God, which is one way to read this story. Um, and it's one that I find uh, to be not very similar to a lot of the other things I see in Jesus's work of you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the incompetent. I think that's in there, right? The, the forgetful. <laughs> At least I've always sort of hoped that that was in there. And, you know, as you read further, there's also a weirdness about who, who are these selfish bridesmaids, by the way, that uh, don't share their oil. Um, are th they're being called wise and the forgetful people or the people who aren't so prepared are being called foolish. But that not sharing also seems to go against sort of a lot of the things that we hear about uh, in the kingdom of God, at least in, in the things that Jesus says, you know, he's always saying the last will be first and the first will be last. And there's really very little else about shutting the door on other people. So it's an uncomfortable story. 
but it's also a parable and parables are known for being uncomfortable and they are known for uh, they are known for making us think in new ways and they they tend to change as we need different meanings out of them and so i have been praying with this parable this week and wondering what to do with this dichotomy between the foolish and the wise which is not usually what jesus says about wise people and foolish people and i walked into the sanctuary and i saw the lamps our oil candles on the altar and suddenly i realized that from beyond the grave dick townsend was preaching to me if you remember dick townsend you remember that he was one who was careful about detail he was prepared his idea uh, or his career was in insurance to be prepared right like that's the whole thing and Dick definitely watched me fumble all the time and run out of the sanctuary a few times. And he probably wondered who this bumbling idiot was that God or the UCC system had sent to his church. When I was visiting him when he was sick, I learned that maybe the worst offense for him was when the oil in the candles ran low and they sputtered out in one of the services. And he sat as you may remember, right behind that candle. So he was very well aware of whether there was oil in the candles. And on his literal deathbed, one of the last things he said to me was, don't let the oil run out of the candles, Rev. At the time, I think I laughed and I said, I won't, Dick. But inwardly, I was rolling my eyes. The oil and the candles isn't even my job. That's not one of the things I forgot about. The worship committee does that. Besides, what's a mistake or two? It'll all be okay. God's all about forgiveness and love. But his words continued to haunt me. You know, his, his directory photo, which became his obituary photo, has him tapping at his temple a symbol of remembering. And every single time I see it, I remember the candles. And every time I see these candles, I think of him reminding me not to let the oil go down. And when I read this parable with Dick's words in my head, a whole new meaning opened up. What if he wasn't just talking about making sure things looked nice for worship? What if to him, that light really did represent the light of Christ and not tending it meant letting our little bit of that light go out? What would he say today when he realized that for the last few months, we haven't been lighting the candle because no one can see it with this particular camera angle in our virtual setup? I think he would tap his temple and remind me sternly to light that light anyway, which you can't see it, but I did. The lights are lit. Because those outward signs reflect our inner truth. We are called to be a people who offer light. Perhaps this parable is you know, the exasperation of Jesus, knowing that he is on his way to the most difficult trial of his lifetime. And he's saying, look, y'all, you have one job. Don't screw it up. Keep your light trimmed and burning. Keep hope alive. Keep God's love alive. Don't give up. The world needs you. And you've got to do your part. Our church's mission statement reminds us of that one job, to carry Christ's love to all as a healing, helping presence in the world. It's no accident that the image of light is used throughout the gospel as an image of love, a way to represent the dispelling of the shadows, the dispelling of anxiety, the dispelling of fear, 
one candle burning in the darkness can reduce all of those forces and can help us focus on God and focus on love. In practice, being the light of the world, another big part of one of Jesus's sermons in Matthew, looks like embodying the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The self-control, I think, is what this parable calls us to, and it's not my favorite, but it's crucial. It's a reminder that we keep putting one foot in front of the other. We take our rest when we need it, but we get back up again and keep moving, keep embodying the love of Christ in all that we do. I'm not sure if you noticed, but the nation got some big news yesterday. The news of Joe Biden winning this election had some people in the streets absolutely rejoicing yesterday. And it had another half of our nation cowering in terror and sadness and disappointment. And something different this year is that each knows what the other half has felt because almost the opposite happened four years ago. Each of us has the capacity within us to imagine what the other one is feeling now, and we are called to remember that. If the kingdom of God is like a wedding party, and I think there's reason through all of the ways that Jesus describes the kingdom of God to imagine it is like a party in that it is a banquet to which everyone is invited, even those who do not usually have a place at a banquet table. If the kingdom of God is like that, Jesus is warning us not to miss it, not to get so distracted by not having enough or not winning the right election or not, uh, not having things go the way we wanted or having been unprepared to be so distracted about that, that we have to leave and go try to find our resources elsewhere. And frankly, I think not to be so selfish that we can't share our resources. You know, I think one of the mistakes that these bridesmaids made was leaving, was giving up, even though their lights might have been going out. Some of us may feel today or may have felt for a long time that our lights are going out. But don't leave before the party starts. Even if it means you have to lean on the light of other people, don't leave. Don't let them block your entrance from the party. And if you can, keep preparing, keep building up your strength and creating your fruits of the spirit because we are not yet at the party. We are still waiting. Even though some were dancing in the streets last night, that is not the coming of the kingdom of God. The sense of joy may be a taste of it. But the kingdom of God is something we cannot fathom. It's the kind of party we could only imagine where each person has enough. Jesus, on his way to trial, doesn't want people to miss that. And so he reminds us, keep your lamps trimmed and burning so that all may enter the kingdom of God. We don't know when it's coming. It may come when the night seems darkest. Don't give up. I may be preaching to myself a little when I say don't stress too much about the ungenerous bridesmaids or the inhospitable host. They, I think, are props to the story. We are called to focus on lighting our own lamps, keeping them lit, doing what it takes to make sure that we can be sustained in the hope and the love of Jesus Christ as long as it takes, as long as we need to. And if you find yourself without enough oil, stay there anyway. Perhaps someone will lend it to you. 
or perhaps if not, their light will be enough to see by until you're able to get more. But don't miss the party. How do we keep that light lit? Paul has an answer for us in Romans chapter 12 when he says, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly, do not claim to be wiser than you are. So bridesmaids on either side, maybe take a humble step. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Keep the lamps trimmed and burning. Whether you are rejoicing, whether you are weeping, whether you are not even sure what to think or what to hope, Put your hope in Jesus and in Christ's promise of love beyond all understanding. There was an image that was shared many times in my social media feed over the days where we were waiting for election results. And it was a cartoon image of a, a kid and the kid's mom. And the kid was saying, mommy, what if our guy doesn't win? And mommy says, we will keep working for love and justice. And the kid says, mommy, what if our guy does win? Mommy says, oh honey, the work is the same. Love one another as I have loved you. This is the work, no matter who is our president, no matter whether our current government is a republic, a democracy, a communist state, a dictatorship, there is no perfect government. There are only imperfect people doing their best. Some admittedly do it better than others. And those are the ones we should choose if we can. But no matter what, the river of God's love still flows. The oil of God's light can still burn within us. We keep nurturing it, keep trimming it, keep it burning for God. The work is to love. The work goes on. And God is present in it. I invite you now to a time of prayer for the many, many people in our midst who need that extra touch of the Holy Spirit right now. I invite you, if you have a prayer you would like to share, to put it in the chat. We stand, God, waiting, some with joy, some with sadness, but we wait trusting in the light of your love to continue to burn no matter what, trusting that the kingdom that you promise is one of great joy for all. We ask special oil in the lamps for those in our midst who are in our nursing and senior facilities, including Jane, Mary Ellen, Betty, Florence, Julia, Bill, and Gail, for the people who are in prisons and in other facilities that they cannot escape even if they want to. We pray for Jo in her recovery from surgery. We pray for Jim facing surgery. We pray for all of those who are sick and suffering with COVID-19. We pray for all of those who are isolated, grieving, sick physically, mentally, spiritually, separated from their loved ones, 
We pray for our leaders, that they may have the wisdom to go forward and do the best things with the most love. We pray for tolerance among the people. We pray for Uncle Jimmy seeking chemo. We pray for Reverend Don DeWeese recovering from surgery. We pray for the family of Ruby Sands who was buried yesterday. We pray for my great aunt, Jane, who is in her last days and who, as my mother comments, is gracious and loving to her visitors, even though they are the ones needing blessed, as though they are the ones needing blessed. We pray for our nation and all of our leaders, present and future. We pray for Maureen's good health while living with her COVID boys. We pray for those in financial straits due to the pandemic, our college kids and all of our kids we love and miss. For those and all the prayers that remain too close for public conversation, but we place in your arms, God. We gather them up as we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray to our Creator, our Mother, and our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now friends, go forth. Keep your lights trimmed and burning. Offer light and love to all whom you meet. May you be the light that keeps them going in the shadows. And if you are in the shadows, may you find generous hearts sharing their light with you. We trust that all are embraced in the light and love of Jesus the Christ, the sustenance of the Holy Spirit, and the embrace of our God. Amen.